Hey everybody, it's Alan, and I hope that you are doing well. So today is April 9th, and that is the birthday of one Mr. Tom Lehrer. He's an interesting character in the world of music in that he's actually a mathematician. At some point early on in his career, he decided that if he were to combine math and science with humor and satirism and music, that he'd be able to get his educational points across a little bit easier. That turned into a whole different career. Many of you may know him from the Elements song. If you do, you're part of the generation that he helped to educate and teach. Well, in honor of his birthday, we're going to do a song called New Math. Some of you who have small children may have perhaps been put in the embarrassing position of being unable to do your child's arithmetic homework because of the current revolution in mathematics teaching known as the New Math. So as a public service here tonight, I thought I would offer a brief lesson in the new math tonight. We're going to cover subtraction. This is the first room I've worked for a while. It didn't have a blackboard, so we will have to make do with more primitive visual aids, as they say in the ad biz. <laughs> Consider the following subtraction problem, which I will put up here. 342 minus 173. Now, remember how we used to do that. Three from two is nine, carry the one. And if you're under 35 or went to a private school, you say seven from three is six. But if you're over 35 and went to a public school, you say eight from four is six. And <laughs> carry the one, so we have 169. But in the new approach, as you know, the important thing is to understand what you're doing rather than to get the right answer. <laughs> Here's how they do it now. You can't take three from two, two is less than three, so you look at the four in the tens place. Now that's really four tens, so you make it three tens, regroup, and you change a ten to ten ones, and you add them to the two and get twelve, and you take away three, that's nine. Is that clear? Now instead of four in the tens place, you've got three, because you added one, that is to say ten to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look in the hundreds place. From the three, you then use one to make ten ones, and you know why four plus minus one plus ten is fourteen minus one, because addition is commutative, right? And so you got thirteen tens, and you take away seven, and that leaves five. Well, six, actually, but... <laughs> The idea is the important thing. <laughs> now go back to the hundredth place. You're left with two and you take away one from two and that leaves... Everybody get one? Not bad for the first day. Hooray for new math, new math. It won't do you a bit of good to review math. It's so simple, so very simple that only a child can do it not the answer that I had in mind, because the book that I got this problem out of wants you to do it in base eight. <laughs> but don't panic. Base eight is just like base ten, really, if you're missing two fingers. <laughs> Shall we have a go at it? Hang on. You can't take three from two. Two is less than three, so you look at the four in the eights place. Now that's really four eights, so you make a three eights, regroup, and you change an eight to eight ones, and you add to the two, and you get one two base eight, which is ten base ten, and you take away three, that's seven. Okay? Now instead of four in the eights place, you've got three, because you added one, that is to say eight, to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look at the sixty-fours. Sixty-four. How did sixty-four get into it? I hear you cry. Well, 64 is 8 squared, don't you see? Well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. From the 3, you then use 1 to make 8 ones. You add those ones to the 3, and you get 1, 3, base 8. Or in other words, in base 10, you have 11, and you take away 7, and 7 from 11 is 4. Now go back to the 64s. You're left with 2, and you take away 1 from 2, and that leaves... Now let's not always see the same hands. <laughs> One, that's right. Whoever got one can stay after the show and clean the erasers. Hooray for new math, new math. It won't do you a bit of good to review math. It's so simple, so very simple, uh, that only a child can do it. Uh, come back tomorrow night. We're going to do fractions. <laughs> so 
I'm just sitting here thinking to myself as I'm listening to this, how many people in the audience were actually trying to do the math along with him? And how many were just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here, but this is hysterical. Really, I mean, think about it. This right here is that point where you've got an educator who realizes that there are other ways to get through to your students other than just browbeating them with facts and numbers. You know, sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to educate, but with something relatable. You know, I remember growing up watching, you know, what was it, Mr. Wizard on Nickelodeon or, you know, looking at people like Bill Nye the Science Guy and other stuff uh, later on in life and thinking to myself, well, yeah, these people are teaching, but by using relatable situations, if that makes any sense. And education doesn't just have to be, it doesn't always have to be fully serious. It does have to be fact-based, but it doesn't have to be serious. And if you can engage the mind, that's when you break through the cloudiness that goes on. Um, it's sad to see sort of the state of the world we're in today in the sense that people are so up in arms about actually education I mean, actually educating people, you know, people get very, very, very defensive about it. But what they don't want to do is they don't want to teach themselves. So they will sit there and get all up in arms about a book in a library or, um, you know, a teacher having a poster on the wall. But God forbid they actually have to teach their kids anything. No, 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 no. Shuffle them off to school and, you know, critique a teacher who's doing the job that they frankly don't want to do themselves or can't do themselves. Let's be honest about it. Sometimes you get these, uh, you get these kids and they, and they come back from school and then their parents will do as much as they possibly can wittingly or unwittingly to dismantle the information that the kid was given at school, confusing the situation and frankly leading to the dumbing down of our population in a grand, in, in a big way. And it's just kind of sad. I mean, you know how they say facts don't care about your feelings? Well, it's kind of gone another way where there are far, far too many feelings who, far, far too many people out there who thinks their feelings have to be more important than the facts. And it's just, it's bizarre to see sort of the culture shift that that has, uh, that, that has turned into. I didn't mean to get all serious about this. I really didn't. I mean, I love what Tom Lehrer was doing for, you know, a good part of his career. Go listen to one of his comedy albums or one of his, his live albums. It's really very impressive. And who knows? You might just walk away learning something. So happy birthday to Tom Lehrer. Hope everybody enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. We can talk about it further. Just know that I appreciate all of you, and I wish you well. Take care.